Good afternoon, everyone. As we look at ancient history, you'll notice there's two things that span all cultures, all times, and are ingrained within the fabric of society itself. The one is the flood myth worldwide. The other is the phoenix, something rising out of the ashes that was burned and created new life and becomes a mythical being. Somehow a celestial object is eaten by flames and then reborn into a new light, marking the beginning of a new era. The ancient Egyptian phoenix, termed Bennu, you notice the green circle on the, on the top of the head that represents what I think is something with a coma around a comet. Hindu mythology refers to it as Garuda, the ancient Arabian phoenix also exists. When we come to the North American tribes, they also had the firebird legend in the sky. That was not lightning, please. The ancient phoenix from China itself turned Feng Huang is about rebirth. Now let's take a look at some satellites here. Follow along. You can see after Ison exited the sun, it has a distinct debris pattern that is holding together. It is spreading though, but it is holding together. Notice as it flies out, I'll give you some closer looks here. Watch the arrow as you can see going around. That's actually the coronal mass ejection hitting the back of that thing and lighting it up. This is the uh, Sechi HI-1. As we can take a look through here, the debris trail, very, very, very distinct. That rock is not three miles wide or five kilometers. That is impossible. And this is what's left over of a three mile wide rock, according to NASA, flying through space, millions of miles from the sun, holding together in its own trajectory and pattern. But that thing was only three miles of just dust, apparently, to NASA. I don't believe that. A t close up starts to resemble sort of, I don't know, something poking out of there ahead. I don't know, a jet, maybe a beak of a mythical reigniting electrical universe reconnecting the comet charge back to the sun. Here's another black and white view so you can see the uh, contrast a little bit better. Zoom in on that for you there. Three mile wide rock that broke apart? I don't think so. That's that's at least five million miles wide itself there. All right, this is comet I saw entering the sun. This is Lasco C3, the blue filter. Now notice something, the filament, the plasma filament that's actually reaching off the sun to try to connect to that comet. This thing does remind of some serpents, dragons in the heavens, and I did a video on that about a month and a half ago, calling that these plasma filaments would jump off as a comet near the sun. Now here we are. This is Lasco C3, the red filter. Watch as it comes around, and whoosh, it sort of turns into some sort of, it looks like, winged being. Now, how would an ancient society describe this? All right, here we come. This is Lasco C3, blue filter. Come around again. Whoa, and there you get the wings and that kind of spray out effect. Causing the coronal mass ejections, you cannot tell me though that is not an electrical influence from the comet on the sun. Here's a slowed down version of it. Three satellites are taking these different angles, but you can see it's very distinct that that is holding together as a pattern. Here's the uh, core 2A and B. Again, as it exits the sun, it has that flare out pattern. At the same exact time, this incredibly rare V rainbow occurred in the skies. Same shape as what we're seeing with the debris pattern of ice on. Now BP Earthwatch does a great job jumping in. Uh, using his color saturation to show you the pieces that remain inside this debris field. Some of those are quite large. Those are hundreds of miles across, not three miles. When we see this same picture, it starts to resemble something pulling out, being reborn. The sun is in the center. It has something to do with the sun. The ancient legends from the Chinese have to do with the sun. Now in China, as well as Asia, the body of the phoenix symbolizes six celestial objects within the heavens, if you will. The head of the phoenix represents the sky. The eyes are the sun. The back is the moon. The wings are the wind. The feet are the earth. And the tail are the other planets circling around. The, the feathers are different types of colors. There's black, white, red, blue, and yellow. And these all depict celestial body movements through. Now, why would an ancient culture put a mythical icon that mimics the heavens. Obviously they were talking about something coming through, something to notice that was different. Something happened in the heavens and the way that they could pass down stories and traditions was through either oral or written, but it had to be such a special thing that it had to be a mythical creature to explain it. And I bet if we had the JPL orbital diagrams or something that went back that far, we could probably find another comet that fit the same bill. If we had satellites 8,000 years ago, let's say something in the Hongshan Neolithic period. If we had Lasco C2, I'm sure we would have seen what they're talking about. Even in Japan, their Phoenix Ho'o -Oh 
Also, look at the cometary types of tails in the skies. UN Dynasty showing the same thing. Now, we're coming to the cometary encyclopedia, but look at the very bottom one where it says figure one. That definitely looks like a rooster head, some type of bird head coming off of there. Come on, there's too many coincidences with the shape of these things. Now, when we come to Comet Holmes, this is my my proof to you that comets can reignite themselves if a coronal mass ejection were to were to touch it there's an electrical connection in our universe it's called the electric universe there's Birkeland currents flying through space and comet Holmes is a perfect example it's a it's an orbital comet it comes around again and again not too close to the Sun but this was on its way out to Jupiter on the way out and it reignited and had this large coma. That coma was larger than our own sun. It became the largest thing in the solar system itself. My thoughts on this are that as the remains, the debris field of Ison, march past the conjunction between Mercury and the Earth, there's a magical line right there. It's a reignition line, if you will. And that is going to go out to another conjunction that happens on the 16th. So during this time, from the 8th, to the 16th, there's a high probability that individual pieces within the coma will reignite, gain their own tails, and start to have their own comas again. This will go right along with the Phoenix myth. Something went into the nest of the sun, burned, and reemerged again. But this time it will be more of a string of pearls type of thing, with each one of these objects becoming its own comet like body, just as Shoemaker Levy 9 in 1994, that string of pearls effect. We'll see something very similar to that, and the Phoenix is reborn. Modern day, how do you explain it? And one last thing almost all the depictions of Phoenix show something radiating from the head. Now, if you look at that, and you just saw all the things I just showed you on this video, that is a coma coming off of a comet. They were trying to use mythical legend to, to show cometary movements in the sky. And again, beyond mythical legend, how about into our modern science legend of snowballs in space? Come on. The electric comet model's definitely been proven by this transit of the sun for from ice on all the the CMEs that occurred during that time. How many were there? Seven? You cannot tell me when it, that comet caused so many CMEs to come off the sun as it rounded it. This is uh, the electric comet model. And it will demonstrate an electrical field again between the debris of Ison and the Sun, causing the reignition somewhere between December 8th and December 16th. For those of you with your eyes on the skies, here's a sky map for December 9th, showing what's on the horizon. Appreciate you watching.